This is a demonstration of the next best action accelerator. I'm going to go ahead and start a simulation here that's going to replay some recorded orders. What we're looking at here is an operations dashboard that shows us what offers are being generated by the system. So you can see here the total offer, uh, offers by count and offers by value uh, in currency. This is where the offers are being issued in each country, number of orders that we've had flowing through the system. So at the moment, there's no qualified engagements. Uh, but if I turn up the speed of the simulation a little bit here, uh, we should see a few more pop up that will actually be qualified. So you can see here, this is qualified offer count and qualified offer value. Uh, and it shows you which offers customers are actually responding to uh, and completing the process of, of converting those offers. So in order to get to this point, we'll have gone through an analysis cycle in Spotfire. And this might involve loading data from a number of different systems. And we can use TIBCO data virtualization for this as well. Here we have some uh, customer information. We have a history of purchase events, including uh, information about the departments and categories and channels that they're happening at and where it's happening in different stores. We have a indication of the product catalog as well as some other uh, data about stores and, and offers. So what we can do is we can use this analysis to define some response periods. So we can define a history of purchases as well as a response period as well. And then we can flatten this data down into um, purchases by department, uh, by category and by channel. And we have the uh, total purchases in currency and the total purchases by quantity as well for each one of these categories. So once we have this information, we can complete a segmentation model using the uh, predictors of, of quantity in each one of the departments. So in this case, what we've done is we've, we've built a model that looks at comparison per compar comparing purchases in home kitchens versus home accessories. And there's four clusters in this segmentation model. So this cluster here represents people who didn't buy anything in either one of those categories. This one is people who bought from home kitchens. This one is people who bought from home accessories. And this is the one where people have bought from both of these departments. And we can use these, the segmentation model to help us target to specific audiences or specific groups of customers that we're interested in. We can also use this data to generate some propensity models or uh, models to determine the likelihood of a customer to actually purchase something in each category. And you can see here, we've got four different propensity models for women's clothing, home accessories, pens and writing, and home kitchens. And these models have been deployed into the running system. And the propensity is calculated in real time and will change over time as a customer uh, purchases different types of products. So once we've gone through our analysis lifecycle here, we'll want to define something called audiences. So audiences are groups of people uh, that we want to target with offers and engagements. So you can see there's a number of audiences that are configured here. We'll just look at the first one, which is customers over 40. This brings up a little spot fire analysis that uh, will display the customers that actually match the filters applied for, for this particular audience. The filters that are applied down here below. So in this case, we're interested in customers that are over the age of 40 and they've completed an event of type purchase. Now we can go ahead and, and modify this uh, analysis here and change the filters. And what this will allow us to do is change the audiences that we're targeting. So right now it's customers over 40, but if we wanted to do customers over 40 who are in China, I can add a filter for China. And you can see the list of customers has changed and I can click the set as conditions button. And this would then change the conditions that are then applied. When I save this audience, it gets converted into a decision table in TIPCO streaming. And then in real time, as the events flow through the system, the audiences are filtered based on what's happening. So the next step in the engagement lifecycle is once we've defined, an audience, defined audiences, we want to then define engagements or campaigns. And engagements are interactions that we want to make with that customer. And again, there's a number of engagements that are defined here. And I'm going to pick the first one here, which is uh, marked as 5% off toy wagons for customers over 40. So you can see this matches the audience that we just defined. So the audience is the group of people that we're going to target with this engagement. Um, and what we want them to do is what's called a qualifying context. So we've identified an audience. We've uh, started an engagement. If they complete the qualifying context, then what they're going to receive will be the next action. So in this case, we want them to purchase uh, this particular product and we want them to buy at least two of them. And if they do that, they will be awarded a coupon, which is for the actual same product um, that will give them 5% off. We can make this two different products as well. So if we want to encourage customers to purchase one thing and then purchase a second thing, 
we can use different product SKUs as part of this process. So the actual process of defining uh, an individual action, best action for a customer, uses uh, what's called the next, next best action rules. So in this case, I'm just going to do an individual order for a customer who's under 40 and ordering a particular product. If I go ahead and submit this order, we'll see what, what actual offers are, are generated. So you can see there's an event that's been generated here, and three different offers were matched as part of this process. Uh, there's three different engagements here, and they might be targeting different aspects of this customer. They might be based on age or gender or location. Now, we don't want to offer all three of these to the customer. So what we do is we look at the offer value as the first pass through to determine what's the best offer for, for this particular customer. And you can see in this case, they have varying values from 45 pounds down to 23 pounds. So what we've done is we prioritize the 45 pound one as the best action for that customer. And that's the one that was actually issued. Now, if I do a different type of order, I'll submit this order, it's slightly different. In this case, it's going to generate uh, an engagement probability. So this is using the propensity models that we've generated as well. So if there's a propensity model for a qualifying context of a given uh, engagement, it's going to use that as the primary determination of whether or not it's the best offer for a customer. So you can see we have two offers here that have engagement probabilities. 0.49 is better than 0.27. So in this case, this is the offer that we issue to that customer. Thank you.